This will be our third installment on the subject of assurance. <clears throat> and I can't overemphasize the importance of assurance. Assurance is to your soul what your skeleton is to your body. Uh -huh. Is what keeps it firm and stable. And it's not a, a common thing in the Christian community, assurance. Some people know that the word is in the Bible and so they they talk about it like they have it, but you can tell the way they live that they don't. Yeah. Don't have it. So this is a key element in the newness of life. In newness of life, assurance is a key element. It's very rare that this, this subject is broached or approached in modern day preaching. Sort of taken for granted that people have it, I think, but you don't want to take it for granted. A lack of understanding is a mark of degeneracy. That's a Romans, the first chapter brings this out. Ephesians 4.18 also brings it out that actually a lack of understanding is what alienates a person from God. That's, right. yeah. That's how serious this yeah. is. We're talking about the full assurance of understanding. So we're looking at assurance with a particular focus to understanding, not academic understanding, not literary understanding. This is a kind of understanding that has to do with your perception that God's working in you, that God's accepted you, that you have access to God, you understand this. Not just that you know it in your head, you understand it, which means you act, you act upon it. You move out upon it. See, it's necessary that your understanding be fruitful. <clears throat> Amen. And there is such a thing as an activity. You go through a religious activity, such as speaking in an unknown language, where the understanding isn't fruitful. And I know that there's a lot of people who disagree with this, but it isn't fruitful if you don't understand what you're saying and doing. That's right. That's right. You may say, well, God's keeping me, you know, and this sort of thing, or I, I just spoke this mystery and I'm not sure what I said, but it's got to be fruitful. Yeah. Right. Bear some evidence. The eyes, it's the eyes of your understanding that are enlightened, according to Ephesians 1.18. God wants you to see the truth in the spirit like you see things in the world by your vision. He wants you to see it. In the world, if you're walking in the sunlight, you can see it. But in this, the kingdom of God, God sheds light on a matter so you can understand it. And uh, understanding is contrasted with not being wise. Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So you can see how important it is. You can be filled with spiritual understanding. That's a quote. God will fill you with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. It's understanding of things in the spirit world and domain. There are, there are th realities that support what's affirmed in Scripture. That goes has to do with God Himself, who is real, Jesus, who is real, Spirit, who is real, spiritual blessings in heavenly places. See, all those realities support the text of Scripture. Amen. It's not just a historical sort of document. And if you know what happened in history, that that that's what that's satisfactory. That's not satisfactory. You've got to have an understanding or comprehension or discernment or perception of the unseen things the scriptures talk about. Love, joy, peace, you know, hope. There's a lot of things that, uh, grace, there's a lot of things that are mentioned. 
Now let me emphasize once again, we're not speaking about a spiritual luxury here. The full assurance of understanding. If you can see it, and I, I do have a deep desire that you see it, this is an area you can't assume. You've got to know. Now our text states that their hearts, it's the people of God, their hearts are knit, they are comforted being knit together in love and unto or in order to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding. Quite a statement. So as we comfort one another, see this is where it's, where it's headed. Comfort is not an end of itself, it's a means to it. Means to an end. The end is the full assurance of understanding. Now the words full assurance, let's focus for a moment just on these so we know, make sure we know what we're talking about. Full, assur full assurance would be like complete assurance. The NIV version says assured. So assurance would be a noun, assured be the experience of, a, of assurance. The basic Bible calls the full wealth of assurance. So in other words, assurance is like a treasury. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like a repository for a lot of things. And full assurance means you've got access to all this planopy of planopy of things that's contained or accessed by assurance. The New Jerusalem Bible says rich in assurance. So this is like a strong point. Your assurance is like a strong point in your life. Living Bible says real certainty and clear. So real and clear, those are two different two different things. Some people are willing to admit that the things are real, but they're not clear. Yeah, right. But in assurance, they're clear. They're discernible. You can see them. But by faith, you see them far off. English Revised Version says, full confidence. This is the kind of thing that enabled David to face Goliath. Or that they enabled Israel to face armies larger than they were. It's just full confidence. It's you just, you can't just explain this academically. If you got it, you know what we're talking about. If you don't, you don't. It's just that, <laughs> it's that simple. Some people don't dare to live godly. They don't dare to do it. Why don't they dare to do it? It may, it may not be because they don't want to do it, but they're not assured. They don't have assurance that they can do it. So that's one of the main functions of the body of Christ is to make sure this is strengthened in every, in every person. The words full assurance are a translation of a single word. Again, you, you come into this that the la one language contains this kind of concept, another language doesn't. So you've got to try and figure out how to say it in the other language. It means a certain confidence and a certain certitude of assurance. It's just, it's a kind of assurance versus just having assurance. It's full grown, it's mature. Assurance is like, begins like a baby. You have some, but it can't really do much. It's an infant, you don't give it any work to do. It can't really be of any personal assistance to you. When it's young, but you want it to grow so it is useful. Yes. It can do something for you. Now the vehicle of this fullness of assurance is understanding. That's the that's the truck it comes in. <laughs> understanding. Uh -huh. it doesn't come by feeling. It comes by understanding. Now, we've been exposed to people that would say, well, I just feel like in the heart of my heart, you know. Just, well, this is just a lot of, yep, that's all it is. Yeah. People don't know what they're talking about. This has to do with uh, real discernment. Now, I thought it would be interesting to, for you to know the meaning of 
understanding what that word means. It's quite a picturesque word. It means flowing together. <laughs> the idea is that everything kind of comes together. You see how it fits together. That's what understanding means. It doesn't mean I understand this and I understand that and I understand the other. We're talking about the understanding of the whole complex of redemptive truth. In other words, you say it makes sense. So when you read something of scripture that maybe at one time was very difficult for you to comprehend, it now makes sense. That's, uh, that's what understanding is. And this is understanding that is initiated from heaven. Amen. You can't study yourself into understanding. Your study is just assembling the facts of the case. You're, you're putting things new and old into your treasury. But the understanding comes when, it, when you got enough in there for God to work with, you might say. <laughs> in other words, it's like a, a recipe. If you're going to make something that requires a recipe, you do have to have all the ingredients. That's the same way with understanding. If you want to understand this or understand that, you've got to have all the ingredients yes, right. necessary. And they all have to kind of flow together. They have to mix. like a, Your heart's like a mixing bowl where you bring the things that you've learned intellectually and then you submit them to your heart who processes them and then feeds it back to the mind. <laughs> so, and so then you say, well, I know whom I believe. So that's what happened. He, he ingested the things of God. It was processed in the heart with the assistance of the Holy Spirit and so forth, and then fed back to the mind so they could seek it, speak intelligently about it. I would venture to say, and I'd be cautious in saying this, that no person has full assurance who can't talk about it, who can't in some way express it or say it in some way. And those of you that are acquainted with the things of God will be able to identify that right away. The things of God, see, they all make sense. You can take like God, Jesus, man, church, flesh, world, salvation, heaven, hell. And they're not different subjects anymore. See, when you have assurance, you're not thinking of that there is a there is a kind of approach to theology that's what I would call a tributary. That the river flows along and there's these tributaries of thought. But now it's different in Christ. The tributaries merge into the river. That's understanding. When they've all come together. This is the same thing that Peter was talking about, full assurance of understanding. It's the same thing Peter was talking about. When he mentioned the day dawning and the day star rising in your heart, we have a more sure, to, sure word of prophecy to which you do well to take. He, the more sure word of prophecy is a prophecy that's been fulfilled. It pertains to Christ and the coming of salvation, the provision of atonement, the provision of reconciliations. Yes, we have a that's been prophesied of old, but now it's, it's here. And as you give attention to that, pretty soon. The day dawns, or full assurance of understanding. That happens. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. John would John talk about the same thing. He, he said this, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Why, that, it's, talking, it's talking about the same thing. See? Now, whether you're young or whether you're old, I understand it's possible that this has, may not have happened to you. But if you will give diligent deed, de, diligence to ingesting, putting into your mind, into your heart, putting into it what God has affirmed about Christ and salvation and the glory and so forth, God will put it together. And when he does, you will become as bold as a lion. You will not be intimidated by people. You will not be intimidated by circumstance. You will not hesitate to draw near to the throne of God. See, you will be bold, 
confident. Now, what is the secret to obtaining this? The full assurance of understanding. Let's read our, our text again. That your hearts might be knit together unto the full assurance of understanding. Hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of understanding. The cause of concern for, Col for Paul, of Paul for Colossians, with the Colossians, he had a great burden for them to have this full assurance of understanding. And it weighed heavy upon his soul. He said, I would have you to know the great conflict I have for you, brethren in Colossae, and for those in Laodicea too. I have a great conflict. I mean, I, I do a lot of thinking about this and pondering about it, and I can see there's a deficiency here that a deficiency here that it has to be answered. That's why you would most admonish one another and exhort one another and edify one another. Edification is not an end of itself. Right. It's what it produces Amen. that is the point. And as the various parts of the body are ministering this, ministering that, then God comes in, he like puts it all, all together Person, you can see the scope of the truth, and of course, to see the scope of the truth, you can't be looking at yourself yes. or the world or something like that. And suddenly, it's like your muscles, like you're like that lame man at the gate, beautiful. You receive strength, and you're able to get up on your feet and do some real navigating in the, in the kingdom of God. This is done by words of comfort, which are insightful words that build up the faith. Notice some things that are said about this comfort. See, some of our times of response and sharing and this sort of thing, this is a ministration of comfort. Sometimes there's exhortation, but there's a, there's a ministration of comfort. In Acts 9.31, the, the churches are set, the persecution of the churches kind of ceased for a while. Then the churches read rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. They were multiplied. So comfort, when we comfort one another, what we're doing, we're speaking words that the Holy Spirit can use. <clears throat> and he, he's the, he's the com in fact, that's his name, the comforter. Amen. He's the comforter. Now, this is what we're talking about, what leads to the full assurance of understanding. So that when we assemble together, we speak words the Holy Spirit can use, which means they can't like, be opinions or things like this. Again, Acts 16.40, Paul and Silas, they're released from prison. They went out of the prison, entered into the house of Lydia, and when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. <laughs> So they delivered some kind of words, they're not spelled out, but they delivered some kind of words the Holy Spirit could take and when they, after they left could develop them a little bit further. Acts 1.12, that is, he wanted to be with them in Rome, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. So here you see another aspect of comfort, that comfort isn't like for the weak Paul wasn't weak, but he was comforted. There were things that were clarified by the mutual edification of the saints. That I may be comforted. Uh, remember, this comfort is what leads to the full assurance of understanding. Romans 15, 4, what several things are written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So now we hear, owing to the grace of God, are regularly exposed to quite a panorama of insights and truth. You begin to sense that certain people are like expert in handling this and that. 
But it all fits together. Remember, the understanding has to do with it flowing together. Yeah. Not, not to get a good feeling. Some people get a, get a kind of a high. They, they kind of use church like a narcotic. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they do. I'm, I'm quite serious. They, maybe they, they get re hyped up during the praise service and then it's life as usual when they leave. But in comfort, mm -hmm. all the ingredients necessary for things to fit together and flow together and have a full assurance of understanding, they're being ministered in this assembly. Amen. He that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. Now comfort is true, true does have to do with consolation. I like to think of it more as the quieting down of the soul. Sometimes I've I come into the assembly and for one reason or another I'm agitated. It may be because of my health. It could be because I've heard things that were displeasing to me. It could be my own lack of efficiency in this area or that. When I'm comforted that like settles the heart down that's what brings full assurance of understanding. See, you can't have full assurance of understanding in a state of agitation and upset and why did they say that and how come they're here in the first place? And that, that doesn't make for, for the full assurance of understanding. And you've got to have this to navigate because if you haven't yet, you're going to face Goliath someday. Right. And there's not going to be anybody else there to help you. Jonathan won't be there. See? You're going to have to just face head on, face what scares you right now. But someday you're going to have to face it. And when you do, you want this full assurance of, of understanding. Now this happens, as I mentioned, in the assembly where we're, where we're knit together by that which every joint supplies. And when we are knit together truth becomes knit together in the, in the individuals as collectively we're knit together in your heart truth is like in other words it's an environment in which truth can be clarified and put together and sometimes at the assembly you'll put together things that you didn't you, you couldn't put together before yes that's right but it's because it's an environment. See, it's an environment of edification and comfort. And the purpose is God, God's not always going to lead you through the peaceful valleys. The way to the promised land goes through some hostile territory. And there's enemies that are going to refuse to let you go through. And without the full assurance of understanding, you'll balk. You'll back up like a Elisha's servant did. They said they'd be against us. Is they were surrounded. There's no hope. Full assurance of faith says, "They that be with us are more than they that be with them." See, that's, that's the difference. The full assurance of faith. And through uh, the prophet, he would, Gehazi was given that insight. <coughs> So we see how that uh, comfort is the means whereby we're edified or made suitable to have full assurance of faith. Colossians 2.19, this happens in the assembly. I want to underscore this. This happens in the assembly. So I can't, what if I'm not able to be to the assembly? Well, it, it God will make, he'll, he'll address that situation for you. You'll probably recall something that some member of the household of faith said, but you'll, but if you can, you you want to be there where this comfort is ministered, so you can have full assurance of understanding. Sparse attendees generally don't have a lot of understanding. You'll pick you'll pick up on it. It become very evident at some point. <clears throat> and Ephesians four fifteen and sixteen says, speaking the truth in love may be able to grow up into him in all things who's the head, from whom the whole body fitly <coughs> joined together 
and compacted by that which every joint supplies. See, that's, that's a description of comfort. There's a description of comfort, which is an aspect of edification. According to the effectual working and the measure of every part, so every parts, you can't give what you don't have. But what you have, you can give. So you find some outlet, some opportunity. We try and provide as much of those as, as is practical. Provide an opportunity for somebody to give what they have because it will contribute to our uh, to the obtaining of the full assurance of understanding. Now what is the uh, objective of this full assurance of understanding? Why, why do we need it? Unto the full assurance of understanding to is what it leads to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. What? <laughs> you like if you want food for thought, that gives some food for thought. The acknowledgement that means acknowledgement is certain knowledge. It's it's a whole it's taking a hold of something that otherwise is very difficult to perceive. To the acknowledgement of God, the Father, and Christ. You might say, well, it should have said the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He, he knows what he's doing here. Yeah. Yeah. Acknowledgement of the mystery, that is how God, the Father, Christ, how they fit together. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. How in redemption these particular aspects of deity uh -huh. yeah, blend together. To God, God speaks of him as, as the creator or the sovereign or the one who purposes. Got to see this, see. Let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. See, if you don't comprehend the mystery of God, you'll not be able to commit the keeping of your soul to him. Because God has to do with him being overall, see? Amen. Having all power, creative power. And the purpose belongs to him. Yeah. When you understand this, when you got a grasp of this, you tend to pray within the circumference of God's purpose rather than your own personal preferences. Right. Yeah. God gives you the liberty to make your request known. Now, we, we, we're very, great, very grateful for that. But this isn't at the heart. Making your request known to God isn't at the heart of spiritual life. Ha properly handled, it can help you get to the heart, but it, it's not at the heart itself. God is the, at the mystery of God, the Father, <clears throat> all right? He's the great begetter. If anything has its genesis or beginning, it begins with God. Now, people don't understand this now. Professing Christians, they don't understand this. He is called the beginning of the creation of God. See, God is the one that instituted and initiated Christ's role in redemption. He is called the Father of Spirits. How's that? <laughs> he is called, 2 Corinthians 1, 3, the Father of mercies. And it is said that Jesus has delivered us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. See, so uh, when you think of God as Father, and you see the sense of it, that you've been called into a salvation in which God is the one that institutes and instigates everything. God is the one that begets everyone that's begotten, begotten of God, born of God, this sort of thing. And the mystery of God and the Father and of Christ. That is the anointed facilitator. And the appointed initiator 
Christ has made us has said made us free, given us liberty. Galatians 5, 1 says, and he's the administrator. <laughs> Christ is the man, the man Christ Jesus. He's the administrator. So you've got to know how this God, uh -huh. Father, Christ, they're all essential in the salvation of God. He's a sustainer. All things are held together by his word. Hebrews 1, 3 says. So he's the Christ is the one that keeping the thing at work and alive and well. And he's the intercessor. See? Christ, you've got to see the mystery of Christ. You, you can't, nobody can sidestep Christ at any, right. at any juncture of spiritual life. You cannot sidestep Christ. Right. And you cannot fail to see God as God. Uh -huh. And you can't fail to see God as Father. This, this, you've got to, you've got to see, make sense out of these God, Father, Christ. It's got to fit together and you got to make sense out of it. It's not, we're just not talking about learning the facts and taking a test on them. We're talking about seeing these so clearly when you enter into temptation, you're thinking God, Father, Christ. Yeah. See, when you enter into a challenge to take the land in God, Father, Christ. See, when you're endeavoring to feed the flock of God, you think God, Father, Christ. See, it's all come together for you. The acknowledgement of the mystery. In other words, they don't fit together intellectually. You can't put them together that way. You've got to have discernment to see it. <clears throat> There's one God and Father of us all. See, you, that, I mean, you've got to grasp on it. You're not confused by that at all. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, you're not, not confused. By that at all, when you talk about his purpose, he's chosen us in him before the found. he's chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the world, so you don't have any, you understand the mystery of God, the Father, and Christ. So this doesn't uh, confuse you. It does confuse some people. I mean, I understand that. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's acknowledged, he's acknowledging the mystery. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us with all heavenly spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. See, there it is again. See, some people are confused about the Godhead. We're, we're dealing with this now in uh, Pakistan, which the dominant Christian sect is the Jesus-only people that believe the Godhead consists of one person. There's a, there's, they're not just in Pakistan, those kind of people. There's one of these churches right down here on Main Street. Yeah. Huh? Right down there. So there, these places are around. Yes. And if you, if you have been prone to have discussions with people about Christ, you've come across people like this. Yeah. What is the difficulty? They don't acknowledge or have a certain knowledge of the Father, of the God, the Father in Christ. They, they, don't, they don't see it. But full assurance does see it. It does see it. You can begin with Christ. You can proceed from Christ to Father. In your understanding I'm talking about. Then from the Father to God who is above all, above all and through all and in you all. You, can, you see it. So you can rest in God because this makes all makes sense to you. So this is the objective of uh, assurance. These distinctions, God, Father, Christ, become clear to us. We don't have any, they don't present any difficulty to us at all. Not that they, not that we merely know they are clear, but their integration is seen. See how the God, Father, Christ, all of the all those I concepts or views mm -hmm. are brought into one in salvation. You, yes, amen. Some people will say, Jesus is all you need. That, that sounds real smart. The question is whether that is a as precise a statement as it's possible. Does that insinuate? That you don't need God, or that you don't need the Father, or that you don't need the Holy Spirit. See, it's very, very important that people learn to say things the right way. 
And when you have the full assurance of understanding, you will be more prone to, you to say things. It will alert you and you'll say things the right way. Now, it doesn't end that way. The full assurance of understanding of God, Father, and Christ. Then he says of Christ, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. See, but they can't be accessed without this full assurance of understanding. That, that's the caveat there. The full assurance of understanding is like the key that unlocks the treasury household. You, God will not give you things you do not, to some degree, understand. Why? Because your understanding is the thing that faith uses to propel you forward. The understanding or comprehension of God the Father in Christ shed light on the nature and abundance of the treasures. <laughs> when you see them clearly, all of a sudden, whoa, sheds light over here on how very much you have access to in Christ. Being a pauper is out of line in the kingdom of God. There's poor people in the world, but there is not to be poor people in Christ. Amen. Not at all. But see, it access with understanding. In the world, the world has a, some idea about what this means. That before they let a surgeon operate, he's got to have them some understanding, right, yeah. and he's got to be assured, uh -huh, yeah. know how to use it. Yeah. It's the same in the kingdom of God. Yeah. So we're not content for anybody to lag behind. We'll do our best to bring everybody up to as far as we can so they think things make sense to them. These three roles must be grasped. God, Father, Christ. God, the powerful creator whose purpose will be fulfilled. The Father who's begotten us and in whom we live and move and have our being. Christ, through whom God's purpose is initiated and sustained. God will not allow the understanding of Scripture, self, or life. God will allow the understanding of Scripture, self, and life only to the extent that He and Christ are comprehended. Amen. Now, assurance does not come by you knowing yourself yeah, that's right. or recognizing what you've got from God. That's not... The full assurance of understanding has to do with you being acquainted with deity yeah, that's right. and what God has done and why the whole redemptive enterprise is under the heading of Father yeah, uh -huh. and the whole means of access is on the heading of Christ. Yeah, see, yeah. And so as you learn the Father, if you learn, you learn the sense of God, Father, Christ, then God can open the treasures. Yeah. Treasures to you. And you'll have the full assurance of understanding. Back in his day, Moses understood more about God than, than the rest of the Israelites. And so he could, he could go further. <laughs> Paul, he understood more about the gospel than the average person did, so he could take it, take it further. Now here's what you'll find. As your assurance, which flows from comfort, rather than comforting one another, and your assurance grows. And as your assurance, as your assurance grows, you're you're beginning to see God more clearly. You're beginning to see Father more clearly. You're beginning to see Christ more clearly. And pretty soon, you're able to stand, walk on your own. And you're able to face enemies you couldn't face before. You're able to do things you couldn't do before. And the kingdom of God is set up. To operate like this Amen. so that whoever uh, doesn't advance in this area they're going to stagnate yeah. Yeah. that's going to happen now in view of that you see what a great transgression it is for preachers and teachers of any sort to emphasize human relationships 
Now we've talked about the ultimate relationships, God, Father, Christ. See, these are like the ultimate relationships. They are the thing that stimulates spiritual growth, which stimulates full assurance of understanding. So when a person majors on some aspect of human life, it shuts the door to assurance, which opens the door to temptation. Brother Ricky has our exhortation tonight. Amen.